How is it possible to judge a person favorably when they are obviously doing the wrong thing right in front of you? How is it even possible? We are commanded by our Holy Torah not to judge people. But how is it possible even to love your neighbor as yourself? Love other people like you do yourself. How is this even possible? Is it possible? We're going to appreciate the insights of Rabbi and Esther Bela Schwartz. The answer is, we may not judge people. We may judge their actions. We are not allowed to judge a person by what they're doing. We cannot say, oh, she's, um, she's doing what she's doing. She's doing the wrong thing. She's lazy. She's incapable. She's unworthy. She has anger issues and different types of things. We can't do that to people. We're, we're not allowed to. Now, what do we say? Why is it that we're not allowed to judge a person? And the answer is, there's two answers. Number one, you don't know if the person can't do any better. You don't know. There's so much a person can do. You don't know how well they can do. And number two is you don't know their potential. You don't know their limitations, in other words, and you don't know their potential. You don't know how far they can go. So it's so, so important not to judge a person. Based on the Mikhtav El Meliyahu, he teaches us what is free will. And this is such a beautiful concept. Now, I want you to picture a ladder. You're on the ladder, and whatever's in front of you, that's the window. This is exactly where you are. Whatever's above the ladder are things that are high, higher up, and they're difficult for you to reach. For example, a person may be modest to a certain point, but certain laws of modesty, are ju they're just too hard for them. So it's just too above them. They're not there yet. For example, um, things that are below for them are... No matter how hungry they are on a plane, and if there's no other food, they will not eat anything not kosher. They just won't. That's their level. They will not sink so low as to eat non-kosher food. That's their level. Whatever is in front of you, that's your level. And you're supposed to take what you have and go higher. Take Look at where you are on the rung on the ladder, and you're supposed to elevate it. Elevate yourself and go higher. Everybody's job is the same. Look at where you are and elevate it. You know, when a person does an Avera, when a person does a sin, what do they do? They redefine the quality human being that they are. What would be happening if you're indulging in a sin? What happens is the next time the opportunity comes up, it's easier to do that sin. If a person engages on evil speech on Lashon Hara, the next time it's just much so much easier. Rabbi Zelot Pliskin teaches a beautiful concept. In this way, the same concept, just as a person refrains from doing the wrong thing that they've done before, this creates in their brains an experience that has been recorded, telling the person, you are possible. This is possible. You are able of restraining yourself. You are able of restraining yourself. You are able to control yourself. So the Mikhtar of Me'aliyahu gives us the following example. He says the following. A person was born in a community that was engaged in murder, constantly murdered. It's a very, um, a very graphic type of example. This person has grown up in an environment where people murdered each other left and right. As the person grew up, he said, I will never murder anyone. I will never spill blood. I will never kill anyone. He says it and he does it. He does not kill anyone. But what he does do is he does steal. I mean, hello, how are people supposed to make money? And the person who grew up in this type of environment is used to stealing. Everybody steals. This is how people make money, how people survive. So from the perspective of Shemaim, from the perspective of, perspective of heaven, this person who never murdered 
is probably in Shamayim and a very extraordinary human being. Now, this doesn't make it right that stealing is okay, is permitted. It's wrong. It's wrong to steal anything that's not yours. However, from the context of this human being, this person has reached a highest level that they can reach their potential. And the, the person will receive much reward. Now, this doesn't mean that, does this mean that the world is a free-for-all? That we should just feel bad for people who don't do the right thing? Okay, they can't do any better. And the world can just go on. Now, my job was not something where I was hired to understand. I wasn't hired to understand. This world is a very confusing place. Actually, most things that happen to us, most things that we experience in the world, we don't understand. You know, you could talk to me until tomorrow. I don't understand how DNA works. I don't understand how battery works. I don't understand how my phone works. I'll go to T-Mobile. I'll go to AT&T, wherever you go. And I'll, I just want to get it fixed. I don't understand. I honestly don't really care to understand. I want it fixed. I want it to use it. So a lot of things in this world we don't understand. Why are we pressuring ourselves to understand why a person does what they do? This is going to give our lives so much clarity, so much ease. We weren't meant to understand. We were meant to judge people favorably. Now, when I'm looking at myself, I'm supposed to twist myself into a pretzel and judge the person favorably. But when it comes to other people, um, as I judge people favorably, I need to make sure that I scrutinize myself, that I look at myself and I say, how much higher can I go? How can I improve myself? I'm supposed to elevate myself, look at where I am and go higher. Now, how is it possible to judge people favorably when they're obviously doing the wrong thing? I can tell myself, they are limited. They're doing the best with the tools that they have. We all come to this world with tools. What are our tools? Our upbringing, our education, our background. We are naturally given character. Some people are naturally calm. Some people are naturally very passionate. So it's their nature, yes, you have to work with your nature. You have to do your best to stay balanced in life. That's the key to every single character trait, as, as our sages teach us. However, this doesn't mean this is your nature and you stick with it. No, but I have to say, this person is doing the best that she can. She's doing the best with the tools that she's provided with. She's not capable of doing more. This person is broken by life. She's broken by life. Her life must be so difficult. This person is unbalanced. Now, I want you to picture a situation that Robinson Schwartz gives us, as the Bible Schwartz gives us, and she says the following. Imagine you're in a parking lot, and you see a person angrily pushing a shopping cart that's in front of her car away, and just, it ends up slamming into another car. And the person really knew what she was doing. She's so angry with herself, she's so angry with life, she's just in total rage, and she just pushes. Now, I see this. Let's say I see this. What do I do? The best thing to do. Now, she's not going to be my, my best friend. And if I see a person who is watching children, who's a babysitter, in the park, and mistreating the kids. Now, I may not hire her as a babysitter, but I cannot say... This is the type of babysitter that she is. I don't know. Maybe I caught her at a bad, bad moment, at a bad day. I don't know. We all have bad days. We're all people. We're all normal people. So back to that example, when I see the person pushing the shopping cart with all her rage, I can say to myself, this person is limited. She's in so much rage. Her life must be so unbalanced. Her life must be so out of control. She doesn't have the tools to control herself. This is the best that she can do. You know, when I constantly make excuses for people, I'm judging people favorably. I'm making them have a possibility in my life, in my heart, 
that I miss saw, I misunderstood, I misunderstood what I saw, I misjudged. I should not make excuses for myself. I should constantly go higher. Now, when a person judges a person favorably, there's three things that happen. Number one, there's a kindness that is created on the person that I'm judging. I'm judging the person favorably. Number two, there's one lesson in the world. There's less darkness. Every single thing that I do has cosmic ramifications. Every single thing, whether I do something good or not so good, everything affects everything. Everything I do affects the whole creation. Number three, we create an incredible act of kindness on ourselves. And I want to elaborate on that. Hashem says, Hashem our God says, the way you treat other people, that's the way I'll treat you. I will mimic you by the way you treat others. And this is so beautiful. The Chafetz Chaim says that after 120 years, we choose two types of judgment. We choose to go either on, on one line. After 120 years, I'll see my celestial video of my whole life. And I'll say, wow, God, this is what I did. Yeah, Everything I do is on camera. Everything I do. So... I see my celestial video and I will go on the line where I represented the way I live. So if I just, if I go on the line where it's line one is justice judgment and the two, number line two is rosy colored glasses judgment. So if I'm on the justice judgment, that means I, of course I have to, I was right. I need to prove my point. I was right. I'm not going to bend. Number two is rosy color glasses. I always give benefit of the doubt. Now, I want to make a point here. This is not for people who are mentally sick. If people are mentally sick, of course, we have to have compassion towards them. Of course, we have to be careful. This is for the normal, typical person. So, for mentally ill people, it's a whole different category. So, the way I act towards other people is the way Hashem, our God, is going to judge me. Every single time we are passing judgment on someone else, we are sealing our own fate. Now, most people judge favorably people who are to the left of them. What does that mean? To the left, less religious. And uh, people to the right of them, they, they're very harsh on. They're very harsh on. You know, to, to the left of them, oh, she doesn't know. She's not religious. She couldn't know any better. She didn't have that background. And people to the right, like, oh, wow, look at her. She's religious. How could she act like that? How could she do that? And she, she gives classes. Let's say somebody's talking to, about, about me like that. She gives classes and she's acting like that. We all make mistakes. We're not perfect. But to judge someone and say she should have known better is a very dangerous comment. You know why? Because Hashem, our God, is going to say, you should have known better. You know, let's bring that back to that example of me. I see my, after 120 years, I go up to Shemaim to heaven and I see my celestial video and Hashem is going to say, you know, well, what have you done with your life? And I'll say, well, I, I gave Torah classes. It's one of the things I do is I teach. And he's going to say, okay, so you gave Torah classes. Okay, so at my celestial video, you, let's say I misconducted myself and it happens. I'm a person, normal, misconducted myself. And Hashem is going to say, you should have known better. You gave to all classes. And absolutely, he's right. However, if Hashem saw the way I looked at the other people, and I told myself, she doesn't know any better. She's doing the best with the tool that she has. She's unaware. She's doing the best that she can. Hashem is going to say to me, you do the best you can. And this is what we want from Hashem. You know, during the three weeks, we mourned the destruction of both the temples and many horrendous things happened to the Jewish people. M mainly they happened because of Sinas Hinam, which is baseless hatred. The opposite of Sinas Hinam is Achavat, Achavat Hinam, Achavat Israel, judging people favorably, loving people unconditionally. Now, how is it possible to, to actually love someone just like you? It's honestly not so possible because there's nobody who 
people you love as you love yourself. However, it is possible in one way. We learn that it is possible by treating other people the way you want to be treated. Now think about it. When you misconduct yourself, when you yell, let's say, when you scream, when you say Lashon Hara, God forbid, evil speech, let's say, do you have a lot of a hard time finding excuses for yourself? You don't have a hard time because the most important thing to a person is their self-respect and dignity. Person wants to have dignity. Person wants to be, uh, wants to matter, wants to have self-respect, wants to be respected. So you don't have a hard time making excuses for yourself in the way you acted, the way you misconducted yourself. Because you want to be good. You want people to judge you favorably. Just like I want people to judge me favorably, I need to judge them favorably. May, may we merit to judge others favorably because this is a kindness we're doing not only to ourselves, not only to others, not only to Hashem our God, but we're bringing more light into the world. Leah Abramov, Being and Becoming.